Good morning and a very warm welcome to you on this Sunday morning. Uh, there are just a few notices uh, as we start, as normal. Uh, firstly, thanks to Bob and Christine for organising the Christian Aid quiz, which took place last night. Uh, great fun evening was had by all and money raised for uh, an important and vital cause, that of uh, Christian Aid across the world. So uh, thank you to you if you came along and enjoyed the evening. Uh, and if you didn't come along, well, you missed a good evening. Uh, just to let you know that Christian Aid Week this week, uh, there was, is collecting uh, outside Roy's um, on Friday and Saturday. If you can help, please let Christine know. OK, so if you can help, please let her know. Um, if you you can do just an hour slot so you don't have to do like a whole day or anything like that so you, you can sign up for for an hour or two uh, whatever you can manage just to let you know also this coming Thursday is the Ascension Day service um, at St Andrews in Eton that's a dinnery wide Anglican service uh, starting at 7 30 and also next Sunday there is a church meeting at Bothorp Church after the service. So just a few things going on uh, this coming week, as well as the regular things like Hope Cafe on Wednesday, uh, on Tuesday, and um, Communion on Wednesday, Tots on Thursday, uh, Food Bank on Friday. So without further ado, let's hear these words from Psalm 145, which says, All your works praise you, Lord, your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come rejoicing in your presence and proclaim the glory of your kingdom your mercy reaches from the heavens to the very depths and your kindness and grace are seen in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now take our worship, all we have and all we are, for your glory's sake. Amen. Well, let us come before the Lord with humble hearts and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Well, may God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. Our reading this morning, we continue our series in 1 Corinthians 15 and we begin at verse 35. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life and, unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he is determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there were earthly bodies. But the splendour of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendour of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendour, the moon another, and the stars another. And star differs from star in splendour. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. Sown in dishonour, it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it's raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. 
So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth, and as the and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so we shall bear the image of the heavenly man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning's reflection is one given to me by Peter, who will be preaching at the church uh, this morning. And I've simply taken what he's produced and will give it to you uh, today. So thank you, Peter, in advance for your message. How easy is it to believe in the resurrection? We recite, on, we recite it in our creeds and declare it over our communions. But how much does it hold us and control us and affect our daily lives? The early disciples found it hard to believe in the resurrection of Christ at first. Some thought it was an idle tale. It took uh, some to be convinced. Now we're speaking of the resurrection, not reincarnation, coming back as something or someone else. Neither are we speaking of resuscitation, giving first aid to someone who's unconscious and stopped breathing. This may be relating to what we have heard over the last few weeks, but it's important and worth reminding ourselves. Christ's resurrection was unique for at least two reasons. First, no one else was present. We read when others were raised, for example, Lazarus, as we read in John 11, there was somebody present to command the blessing. Jesus said, I have authority to lay my, lay my life down and authority to take it up again, we read in John 10, 18. Jesus was always in control. He's the Lord of life. But secondly, it was complete. Jesus was no more to die. He's the first fruit from the dead. Others like Lazarus, even though he was raised by Christ, when Christ called him out of the tomb, Lazarus would die again. This time for good. And they, like us, will have to wait for that great day when we will all be raised. Well, as to the resurrection, we have the experience of the witnesses. Paul lists this in this great chapter of those who saw Jesus alive again. There was Peter, the twelve apostles, and over 500 at the same time. We read this in verses 5 to 7 of 1 Corinthians 15, just in case you're wondering. Then the risen Jesus appeared to James and all the apostles. Finally, he appeared to Paul, who was writing this letter. Then, of course, there were the women who first met the risen Christ on Easter Day, and the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Never was an historical event attested by such experience from such a variety of witnesses. Now, these are the facts, but what does it all mean? It's the apostles who, supported by the scriptures, give the explanation of these events. For Christ opened their mind to understand the scriptures, as we read in Luke 24, verse 45. Now, the person who says, well, the cross is enough for me, is limited in their knowledge of God. The cross is only half the story and is incomplete without the resurrection. Paul wrote earlier in this letter how Christ died for our sins through which we are forgiven according to the scriptures and then he says he was raised for our justification according to scripture. In other words the resurrection makes us right with God. Where God predestined he prophesied and performed. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again and so we proclaim what is implied. For Christians, Christ's resurrection means our resurrection is assured. We've already benefited from Christ's resurrection. G 
Jesus said, he who believes in me has passed from death to life. John 5, 24. That's resurrection. Paul writes to the Ephesians, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace you've been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That's resurrection. Therefore, seek the things that are above, for that is our home and our future. So we have the experience of the witnesses of the resurrection, and we have the explanation from the word for the resurrection. We also now have an expectation of our salvation by the resurrection. But how easy is it to believe in our resurrection? Are not our bodies buried? As we say, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Peter says he was watching a TV programme, a documentary on World War II, about the D-Day landings. After the beachheads were taken and held, the comment made by at least two of the commanders was that it was then that the war was won. Victory would be theirs after D-Day. They still knew hardships, problems and setbacks. Difficulties and death still lay ahead, but victory was assured. And so it was at the cross and resurrection that the war against sin and death and hell was won. Christ disarmed the enemy, as we're told in Colossians 2.15. We Christians have our D-Day, Easter, the cross and resurrection of Christ. There's threefold deliverance for us. Firstly, we've been saved from the penalty of sin by a crucified saviour. The wages have been paid. Secondly, we are being saved from the power of sin by a risen saviour. We are saved from its dominion, its power over us. We haven't yet reached a sinless perfection and there will still be problems, difficulties and setbacks in our lives, but victory is assured. And thirdly, we will be saved from the presence of sin by a returning saviour. When Christ returns, we will have resurrection bodies like his. Now, some might say, well, what will they be like? Well, Paul raised two questions. How are the dead raised? In verse 35. In other words, how is it possible? And secondly, why is it necessary? Well, the first question is answered from the perspective of nature. A seed must die and be buried before it can grow into a plant. An acorn is planted and then grows it into an oak tree. They are the same yet different. The, the, the acorn looks different from the tree. And yet the tree came from the acorn. Everything is that is needed for that great oak tree is there in the acorn. Or the caterpillar ceases to be a caterpillar in order to become a butterfly. A caterpillar and a butterfly are the same but different. How? Well, by God's almighty power. That's how. Secondly, why is this necessary? Well, Paul points to the body in its different forms. There's the person, but there are also animals, fish, birds. There are earthly bodies and celestial bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets. And each category, whether earthly or celestial, has its own form and nature, suited and situated in its own environment. Our bodies, explains Paul, are not fit for purpose in the heavenly realm. This present flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but new creation can. And so Paul sets before us two men, both representatives. First there's Adam, the first man, from whom we derive our own nature, giving us our place here on earth, a man made of the earth, of dust, our earthly bodies belong here. We are at home on earth. Then there is Christ, the second man, the second Adam, as he's called in the New Testament. 
the heavenly man coming from above. He took our sinful human nature and dealt with it at the cross so that we being born from above may be made fit for purpose here on earth by being clothed with a body like his own resurrection body. A spiritual body, yet a body you could touch and hold. It is as Peter writes in his first letter, this body shall never perish, it will not rot, it shall not spoil, it will not rust, it shall not fade, it will not run down. This is the victory of the cross and the triumph of the resurrection. Let us live in the reality of these facts and rejoice in them. Through faith in the living one, we shall die no more. We shall live even though we die, as it says in John eleven twenty five, Because Christ lives, we shall live to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the life that you give us through your son, Jesus Christ. We now pray for the world in which we live and all the difficulties within it. We see so much suffering and death all around us, problems and difficulties. And Lord, these can weigh us down. Lord, we bring before you the needs of the world, the sufferings of the world. We bring before you those who are in pain, who are ill. Lord God, we ask that you would bless them. In particular, we pray for Jill in hospital. Be close to her and may she get the help uh, that she needs in that place. We pray for Kathy and Noel as Kathy recovers from being in hospital. We also pray for Mary and Carl and Claire as Mary also recovers from being in hospital. Lord, be close to these people whom we love. Be close to them in their recovery, in their treatment. Lord, you are the one who comes close to us. And we thank you that you give us your life. So Lord, we bring before you those on our hearts and on our minds this day. We lift them before you. And we come to you in the power of he who raised Jesus from the dead, the Lord, our deliverer, our risen King. And Lord, we pray today, finally, we pray for the countries of Iran, Sudan and Pakistan at this time. In all their needs and troubles, we bring them to you. And particularly we pray for the asylum seekers here in Bothorp, particularly those who are from Iran and Sudan. Be close to them as they seek to make a new life, free from trauma, free from suffering, free to live. Be close to them, we pray and those whom they love. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Thank you for joining me this morning. And I wish you every blessing as you go into the week. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve and share the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me and I wish you well and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.